Welcome along guys. Well, I've been promising it for ages, but finally the bike is mine. The bike is taxed and insured. I'm ready to tell you all about the updates. The Dimag wheels, what have they been like on the road? Oh, the remapping. Let's get to it. First of all, you may notice this strange little thing <laughs> on my wing mirror here. Well, I've actually been sent an Insta360. Oh yeah, to test out. It's a 360 camera, so I think it'll be really interesting on the on the ride review videos, you know, to have a few different views of the bike, and uh, so we'll see how we get on with it today. So watch this space for the 360 camera views. <laughs> It may not work, I'm still in the experimental stage, but uh, we'll see what it's like. So, the GSXR is all mine at last. God, it's taken a long time. It's taken a while to get this sorted, get the documentation through from Suzuki. Um, yeah, it's been a nightmare. I don't want to go into it, but it's been a pain in the ass. But the good news is it's now mine. I can legally ride it on the road. Oh, it's fantastic to be back on it. I bought the H2 when I thought I wasn't going to buy this because they messed me about too much and I was getting fed up. So I thought, that's it, I've had enough of it. I'm buying the H2. Next minute, invoice from Suzuki. Oh, here you go, buy the bike. So I bought it, I took out a loan to buy this. Oh, my, my camera's wiggling around already. Excuse me a second. So I took out a loan to buy this thinking, oh, I. You know, I can't afford to keep it long term, I'll keep it short term. I've got to try out the wheels, I've got to enjoy the bike for the rest of the summer. But well, the plan was to sell it. But I'm loving it so much, and it's so different to the H2, that I'm seeing if I can afford to keep it now. Because with the mods done to this bike, it's an absolute weapon. First of all, what should we talk about first? Well, the remapping which was done to this, it had the hilltop tune on it originally. Don't get me started on hilltop, I'm not going to talk about hilltop stuff just yet, but uh, yeah, I wasn't happy with how the bike was performing with the hilltop tune when it had the full system on it. It was, it was very snatchy, it felt lean. I wasn't happy. So I took it to be remapped. The video's up there, I put a card up, but uh, hopefully you've all seen it. Massive power increase, I managed to get, I think it was 204 bay horsepower at the back wheel, with the Predator system on it. The bike was seriously lean when it came in, and it, that snatchiness is all gone. The throttle response is now beautiful. Below 3,000 revs, it's a bit flat. I think that's just the nature of what the bike is like. But as soon as you go past 3,000 revs, it takes off the amount of mid-range. It's at least as powerful as the new S1000RR in the mid-range. It is seriously quick in the mid-range. And then when you get in the upper ranges, it flies. It feels faster than the new RR. I think it must be on par with the new RR. It is seriously fast. <laughs> that torque it's got means you haven't got to just rev it to get it into the power. It will sit quite happily, top gear, three and a half thousand revs, poodle on. Still a good bunch of torque there and that's what makes a good road by the end of the day, the torque. Doesn't matter what the peak power figure is at 12,000 rpm it's more about what's the peak torque figure at 5,000 rpm. So I did ride the bike when it just had the map on before the carbon wheels went on and it was ferocious. Smooth but ferociously powerful. Put the Dimags on it and my god. These are quite lively at the front. They tend to waggle the bars a little bit. So what PB did when this was run as their long termer, when Chris had it, they lowered, you get a lot of spare fork tube sticking out of these on the R model. 
the standards. What they did, they, they raised the front of the bike to calm it down a little bit. So that calmed things down. It still turns incredibly quickly, but it just, it just calmed things down a little bit at the front end. Stopped it wheeling quite so much. Well, it still wheeled a lot, but it stopped it head shaking so much when you're too aggressively on the throttle. Fitting the Dymax has actually brought that back a little bit. The wheels are so light now that it lifts the front and it can get a little bit, a little bit exciting. <laughs> Getting off the H2, which is so big and stable, you know, it holds this line through the corner really easily. Because this is now so late, so light, and those wheels, you know, the, the, gyroscop the gyroscopic effect of those wheels going round is lessened because they're lighter, the bike changes direction in the corner very easily. So it's just obviously a bloody good thing, and it means more concentration to ride the bike. <laughs> Because any sort of shift in body position or slight inputs to the bars will cause you to uh, be able to change your line mid-corner quite easily, which is beautiful. And also makes it a little bit harder to ride. That blip is so good on this. and easy, well not as easy as the double R but still bloody handles and is easy to ride just changes direction so quick though if you need a bit more in the corner, you've got it so, I mean you, you can just go, whoa I've got to tighten up with these wheels you can go, whoa you can turn and move mid corner before it wasn't as lively as that but the whole bike is just so light on its feet, so quick to turn, so beautifully. <laughs> so beautifully fueled now. This is why I think I've got to keep it because it's just an awesome, awesome bit of kit now. Oh yeah. are also excellent on this. Mine's a 2017 but it's had the 2018 uh, discs and calipers fitted. So it's a little bit, it's, it's, it doesn't have that fade problem. I had no problems with brake fade at Snetterton, which I was really surprised about. I was really expecting to have problems with that, but nothing, nothing at all. I would want to do some braided lines on this. Now I've sort of decided I'm going to keep the bike. I think I'm going to keep it. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure for the time being, <laughs> as sure as I could ever be about keeping bikes, I would like to keep it. Because it's the same route I took when I was trying this out, comparing it to the RSV4 factory. It's the same bit of road, so it's interesting to see if I can notice any differences with the Dymags. I know there will be, it's, it's so hard to, to pick up on this, but I know it's definitely much quicker to turn, much easier to change direction. The whole bike is much more lively now than it was before. That's quite tight. But it's just, Effortless, it's like a 600. I do wonder that the quick shift is not quite as good as it used to be. Tom's bike, the Red Gears XR, that I rode when I was having this remapped, that seemed a lot smoother than this. I feel that little flip flop there, those, those wheels, it just takes no, no, hardly any input to change direction. As I mentioned in the install video, when we weighed everything, the wheels are light on them. The standard GSXR wheels are incredibly light, but even replacing already light wheels with the Dymax, it's made, it has made a huge difference. And not just to the acceleration and the handling, also to the braking, I'm sure it has. I bought it off Suzuki with the intention of reselling it and making a few quid. Now, 
I just love it so much I don't think I can sell it. Mrs. Chops is going to kill me. <laughs> when I tell her I'm keeping it, I may just keep quiet. She won't notice it in the garage, will she? We'll just keep it, we'll keep paying off that loan. <laughs> and keep the bike, because it's so nice, it's so lovely. I don't want to get rid of it. guys I'm gonna go off and uh, have a bit more fun with the cameras off <laughs> and I'll see you next time thanks for watching take care and I'll see you soon this is power level one which is full power Absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick.